If you're like me, you've been confused about the difference between iterators, iterables, and generators in JavaScript. And so in this video, we're going to make it very clear what the difference between those three things are. And we're going to start at the lowest level with the iterator. So JavaScript has an iterator protocol. So let's take a look. Let's create an iter object here. And to implement the iterator protocol, we simply need to implement a next function. And what this next function needs to return is an object with two things, a value and a done. So the simplest possible version of an iterator could look something like this. This returns value of zero and done of false every single time. And so as you could expect, if we do iter.next.value, we'll find we just get zero logged out. So this on its own may feel a little bit open ended. And that's kind of the point. This is the lowest level uh, primitive, if you will, that JavaScript has for iteration. And so this allows you to create kind of whatever functionality you want. For example, we could create a counter in this object that is zero and value could be this dot counter plus plus every time. And so now if we do multiple console.logs here, you can see that we have an iterator that will continue to count up, we'll have positive integers, uh, basically until infinity. And so this is a very simple version of a sequence that never ends. Of course, one of the cool things about it is that this sequence is lazily computed, right? We don't need to figure out what the next value in our sequence is until somebody asks for it. Now, in this case, we've always had done equal false. But maybe what we could choose to do is say, we're done when counter is greater than or equal to 10. Uh, let's create a variable here called next while not next.done console.log next.value. And let's get rid of these other ones here. And so now we actually have some iteration in place. And of course, for this to actually work, we need to define a new value for next here. If we actually run this, oh, uh, let's see counter not defined. Yep. Sorry about that. Let's do this dot counter. And now you can see we're actually iterating through. We have zero to eight. Now you might say, well, wait a second. We said greater than or equal to 10. And that's true. The problem here is that done comes with value nine. And so we never actually print it out. So this is actually probably more useful as a do while loop, something like this. And now we should get all the way to nine. So this is the iterator protocol. It's kind of the lowest level primitive protocol that JavaScript gives us for creating an object that can be iterated over. Now the next one up from this is the iterable protocol. And it's arguably simpler to implement than an iterator. However, it depends on iterator having been implemented. And here's what we can do to convert our iter object here into an iterable. All we need to do is implement symbol.iterator. Symbol.iterator is a function and what it needs to return is an object that implements the iterator protocol. So the iterable protocol kind of sits on top of the iterator protocol, and it gives us access to some pretty cool things. What do we have to return here? Well, we're going to return this, right? Because iter, this object that we're working inside of is already an iterator. And so now because we've implemented symbol.iterator, it is an iterable as well. And so this means it's much simpler for us to iterate over this object. So here we've had to use a do while loop where explicitly calling next and checking for value and done. And so all of this is much easier for us to do now that we have iterator. In fact, we can use a lot of the built in JavaScript iteration tooling. So the most simple thing we could do is for const I of iter, right? This is kind of the way that we typically think about iteration. We can do a simple for loop and now if we run this, you can see that now we're getting zero through eight again. So we've seen that we can use a for of loop to iterate. Of course, we could also create an array by spreading it. Notice something important here. We're spreading this iterator, logging it, and then iterating over it. What do we get in our log output? Well, we get our array here. We don't get any log output. The thing about an iterator like this is that we are consuming it. Once we reach the end, we can no longer iterate over it. There's no way to go back to the beginning or to restart. We have this internal state that we are managing via the iterator protocol. And so we can't reset that. And so this is kind of where generators come in. So we saw iterator at the bottom as kind of the base protocol for what is the next item in this sequence. We have iterable one step above that, where we can use for of loops, or we can use um, spread. And so generators now are one step on top of that. When we create a generator, we are creating something that implements both iterator and iterable, and also allows us to create multiple instances of that iterator. Go down here and let's create a function and we'll call this fib generator. I want you to notice something. We put a star after the function keyword here, and that star represents that this function is a generator and it returns iterables. 
Well, it returns an iterable that is also an iterator, but let's see how that works. So inside this function, there's a lot of complexity, a lot of cool stuff you can do with generators. Basically though, it's a function that makes it easy for us to implement this next situation here. The way this works is instead of returning a value and done, what we can do is use the keyword yield. And yield is essentially saying this is the next value in the sequence. We'll start very simply here. Let's say yield one. Okay, so we have a generator that just yields the number one. So let's create our iterator here by calling fib generator. This is how we create an instance of an iterator, right? So like I said, fib generator can create multiple instances of our iterator. We can call console log iter next, and let's call it twice. If we do that, you can see first we get value one and done is false. Second, we get value undefined and done is true. So we've yielded one value in this iterator. So it's a sequence of one thing. And the generator syntax kind of gave us this output shape, right? We didn't have to write a next function. We just wrote a function that yielded one thing. We got that value, done is false. Then the next one is undefined. And we can see that done is true. We can yield two, three, four. And let me throw a few more of these console log statements in here. And now you can see we're getting all of those. One, two, three, four, done is false for all of those. And then done is true for the last one. Excellent. So we are iterating through our iter2 here by using the next function specifically. So we're kind of doing the manual way. We're using the iterator protocol. What we could do instead is, and let's create an iter3 for val of iter3. And so now we're using iter3, which is the same shape, the same object that we would get out of fib generator or another one of the same objects, I should say. So we have two instances here and we can iterate over it using the iterable protocol. And so you can see now, of course, the iterable protocol kind of gives us the value inside of these objects. It kind of unwraps that for us. It manages when we get to done. We don't have to manually think about that. And so we have one, two, three, four. Now you'll remember when we looked at our initial iterator up here, we said that one of the nice things about the iterator protocol is that it's lazily evaluated, right? We don't need to calculate what the next value in the sequence is until someone asks for it. And this is true about generators as well. We only move on to our next yield statement when the next function is called, whether we're calling it explicitly or whether it's happening behind the scenes in a for of loop. What this means then is that we can loop inside our fib generator kind of as many times as we want. So we can create an infinite sequence. So for example, let's say let a equals zero, b equal one, while true. Now a while true loop is going to iterate infinitely, right? And so you might think, well, that's just going to cause an infinite loop. We're going to uh, kind of crash the process. Well, remember that once we get a yield statement inside this while true, execution will pause until next is called, and then it will pause until next is called again. And so what we can do here is let's create a C value that is A plus B. Let's yield C, and then we'll set A equal to B, and we'll set B equal to C. And that should be the way that we get a Fibonacci sequence. So this is a generator that returns an infinite Fibonacci sequence. As long as you continue to ask it for numbers, it will continue to give them to you. And so it will be fine for our iter2 here. In fact, what I'm going to do is comment out this for loop for a moment, and let's run that. And you can see we get one, two, three, five, eight. Excellent. Notice that we never get to done true because our sequence does not have an end. In fact, if I uncomment this for loop, let's see just how hard this goes. You can see that, okay, almost immediately we got to infinity. I don't even think I can scroll back far enough for us to not see infinity. So, uh, but what I could do instead is we could add a max as a, an option to fib generator here. And we can say, let's just set that to default to 100. And so then before we yield C, we can ask, uh, if C is greater than or equal to max, then we should break out of this loop. Otherwise we should yield. And so that will actually end the sequence. If we run this, what we should see is we have all the way up to 89. Those are the three basic iteration protocols that we have in JavaScript. To review quickly, at the lowest level, we have the iterator, which is simply a next function that returns value and done and then you can iterate over that manually. You can use a lot of the built-in syntax for iteration if you implement the iterable protocol on top of that, 
which is very simple. It's just an iterable returns an iterator. Finally, we can use generators. Generators implement both iterator and iterable. They give you almost as much power as the iterator protocol itself does. You can pretty much do any type of complex iteration in a generator. And at the same time, the syntax is pretty simple. There are a few gotchas to keep in mind, but it's a pretty simple process. And then you can iterate over that. You can create multiple instances of a generator by calling the function and the resulting object implements both iterable and iterator. So that is iterator, iterable, and generators in JavaScript. Let me know if you guys have any questions about these. I'm hoping to do some more videos on these things, including async iterators and async generators in the future. And um, if there's specific details or maybe examples or patterns that you want to see, let me know in the comments. This was just meant to be a high level introduction to the three patterns. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.